Hey Flats Class fans, welcome back to the channel. And I've got something different for you today, but before I get into that, I want to make sure that you're subscribing to Flats Class YouTube. By subscribing to Flats Class YouTube, you're going to get notifications and you're not going to miss any of these incredible tips that we share each and every day now, really. I mean, we're on it. Uh, we want to be your resource for inshore fishing information. Okay, what do I have for you today? I think I've got something pretty cool because uh, I've been fishing with clients the last three weeks. We're about the third week of April. And April is always one of those months that I kind of dog ear in my planner for clients that like to snook fish. And you might say, well, why is that? Well, one, it's the pre-spawn time. So the fish are starting to get a little bit more aggressive. They understand that uh, the reproduction process is coming up really soon, as soon as we get into May and June and July. So they're, they're, they're determined. Two, not only is the air temperature rising, but the water temperature is rising as well. So now we're seeing maybe low 70s in the morning or mid, mid 70s in the morning, and we're seeing probably close to 80, 81 degrees in the afternoons, which is perfect for snook fishing. Uh, not only that, there's bait everywhere. I mean everywhere. There's pilchards, there's pinfish, there's needlefish. There's ladyfish galore. There's mullet everywhere. I mean, there are tons and tons, metric tons of bait in the water right now. So everything is setting up for a great April for all of us. But for me in particular, I've had a lot of success with my clients over the last couple of weeks. Now I'm going to send you off on a little adventure that we, uh, we caught some fish with Zach and his father, Mike. Go check that out. I'm going to get a few things together in my Busby box, maybe five lures that's been working for us that I think will help you too. All right, go check this out. I'll be right back. So this turns out to be a monster snook. A monster snook. I mean, we had this cold front with the big, the big change in the weather. What a fish. That is a huge snook. Huge. Woo! That is a huge snook. Support him. Support him. There you go. Look at the size of that snook. <laughs> That is a snook there. We'll have to get a quick pick. Yep. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. That is the best good part. Shape. Woo. Good job, buddy. Next one's yours, pal. Great job. Just so you know, that was Zach's personal best snook. It was about 35 and a half inches long. And we caught that fish on a flat that average depth was probably 18 inches. Uh, but it came out of a little deeper pothole that just stood in the middle of the flat. And, and oftentimes those are the targets for the larger reds, larger trout, and obviously the larger snook. Uh, we had a nice incoming tide and it was fun to throw our officials up there. His dad, Mike, Zach's uh, father, he, he caught several nice trout uh, while we were up there, like this one here. So, I mean, we've had some really good fishing going on but let me start out with that that bait that we were using in the very first clip if you remember before my intro we were talking or i wasn't talking i showed you an underwater piece of footage uh of a bait and that bait let me 
checked out is the Hercules Minnow. Now the Hercules Minnow, um, if you can see it there nice and clean, is, make sure, is a four inch swim bait. I use a lot of the four inch swim baits when we're fishing shallow. Um, and the Z-Man one is ideal. Uh, it's an integrated system here. It's got a big heavy duty hook. It's perfect for snook. Uh, and in the springtime, I make long casts over the flat and I can really cover a ton of water with these Hercules swim baits. Now, they make them in a five and a six inch size as well with a heavier weight so that you can really cover some water. But at three eighths, I can sling this a long way across the flat and do really well. That's bait number one that has done very, very well for us. And I'm not gonna go over the rod and reel setups because I have a lot of varied ones here. Um, probably the second uh, popular bait that we use, especially early in the morning, is the Surface Walkers from Miralore. Now this happens to be a top pup, but we also use the MR26 Mirror Mullet uh, quite a bit. <laughs> we'll use that bait, but this top pup has been a real fan favorite for us. I use it a lot in front of the creeks in the mornings. Uh, on some of the longer points out in front of those creeks. And this short little topwater gives me the ability to walk it faster. Sometimes when you use a larger topwater, what will happen is you'll try to walk it fast, but it requires so much effort to get it really going. And right now with the temperature coming up, you can really, and almost, I like to say, make that thing where it looks like there's bubbles coming behind it, where it's waking. And that will definitely generate a strike. So. Uh, if you're looking for another really good lure to toss this spring in April, it would have to be the top water. Now, let me show you number three that has been working excellent. And actually what Zach caught his big fish on, and that is the Z-Man 5-inch Jerk Shads. Why do I like the five over the four? It's because it's a little heavier. I can cast it a little longer. And then when we work this erratically, it has a wild action. Because the sides are somewhat flat, and I have it on a very lightweight rigging hook, it allows me to make that long cast. And when we pulse it, it, it goes to the right. Pulse it, goes to the left. So it's almost like a sub-walking bait underneath the water. Drives snook wild. And because of its length, its tail's longer, so it has a lot of action. Remember, all the Z-Man baits, are made out of a proprietary material called the Laztec. So they have a lot more life than a standard plastisol bait that you might get from another manufacturer. So that would be bait number three for me. And I'm, I ranked these um, kind of in the order that I like to start my day off with. Uh, another one I like a lot is the Miralore Miradine. Now this is in the live bait series right here. This is the mullet. But the pinfish or the pilchard or any of those are really good. Uh, it's the MR17 size. Why the smaller size? Well, most of the bait, when you see it on the flat this time of year, is smaller. And when they're getting a little persnickety and I want to work a bait quickly, and I can work this one much more quickly than I can the MR27, it's extra large size, uh, it's cousin. This is a much better deal for me. And then lastly, I took this one out of the uh, out of the Busby fishing box, would have to be the Z-Man 5-inch diesel minnows. Why this bait? It's a big bait. It's nice and buoyant. It works great on a jig head. Oftentimes we throw it on quarters or 3 8 trout eye jig heads or even the redfish eye jig head uh, that has a little longer shank. And every once in a while I'll rig it on a chin locks where I can wake it across the surface. When does this come into play? I use this bait all the time. I love to use it as a soft plastic top water. Sometimes I use it uh, with the jig head so I can achieve a little bit greater depth. But with all the shedding grass that you get during the spring break time here in April, and, and again, you know, you're trying to work over these oyster reefs, these limestone points. You'll get hung up by running a chin lock hook on it. It does a fantastic job of getting over the top of that stuff and snook go wild for it. It's a big bait, attracts an alpha bite. Now, I'm gonna send you out uh, to who I fished with yesterday, which was the illustrious Mike Connolly from Jacksonville. Uh, he's a super fan of the show, and the very first stop we made, 
he had a, a, a jerk shad get detonated. I mean, literally detonated on one of his better snook that he's ever caught. Go check this out and I'll be right back. Jacksonville snook there, huh? <laughs> yeah. We'll get you releasing him. Okay. There you go. Good job, brother. That's what you want. <laughs> My man. <laughs> we had a lot of exciting snook catches this week. Here's Chris coming over from the East Coast to do a little snooking with me in April, and he did it, he did very well too, throwing big paddle tails up against the mangrove edges on the high water and pulled this giant out, which was his personal best snook. So this type of action is kind of expected in April if you are in areas where snook are prevalent. Um, and those five lures that I just revealed to you they will help you put a few of these fish in the boat. All right. Uh, if you like what you're seeing here, like I said in the intro, please subscribe and tell all of your friends. I want to be your inshore authority for catching fish. Okay. I've got to work on another video. Catch up to you guys in a little bit. See ya.